Hey guys, welcome back to Network Chuck. Now, this video is for you if you're a CCNA candidate, CCMP, CCIE, or if you're like in IT or even thinking about getting IT, getting into IT. I think I covered everyone. So voice VLANs, these things are magical, and I would love to tell you more about them. Now, real quick, if you're in need of CCNA training, Chris Bryant has his video course for only 12 bucks on Udemy. So link up here, link below, $12 guys. Even if you already have training, $12 just to supplement your training with extra stuff, just do it. So without further ado, Voice VLANs. Hey guys, Network Chuck here, and today we're looking at Voice VLANs. What are they, why do we need them, and the magic that makes it all work. Now, many of you already, you know, understand what a voice VLAN is. You know that when you configure a switch port to make a phone and a computer work on one port, you're gonna go into interface, you know, whatever. You're gonna configure your, your access VLAN. You're gonna configure your voice VLAN. Kinda looks like this. And boom, that's where you leave off. For me, and I know for many of you, I wondered, okay, well, why do we need that? And, and second, how does that work? How does two VLANs work on one access port? I don't understand that, because that sounds like a trunk to me. Well, let's dig in. Now, I have a beautiful six-month-old daughter, and I took her to the doctor for her two-month-old checkup a while back. I saw something that immediately made me think of VLANs, because, you know, the network nerd in me, when I go to places, I just see network concepts on the walls, right? So we came up to it, the doctor, and there were two entrances, one for healthy kids and one for sick kids. And when you walked into the waiting room, it looked something like this. There was a partition in the middle, and you had your sick kids, and you had your, your healthy kids. And I thought, that's a VLAN. We're separating two types of people, healthy kids and sick kids. I was very thankful that my daughter was separated from sick kids, as I would be vice versa. I wouldn't want my sick kid to get a healthy kid sick. And I thought, you know, that's kind of like network traffic. You know, you've got your, your sensitive traffic that needs priority, that needs to be separated so it's secure. Uh, and you get your data traffic over here. And I thought, yeah, that's that's that just that's essentially what a voice VLAN is. It's it's putting a boundary between the voice traffic and the data traffic, and making sure we can prioritize it, making sure we can keep it safe. And that's really what it is. So when you're talking about security for a voice VLAN, and that goes into you know why we actually need one, and the biggest re I mean one of the biggest reasons is security. Really, why you need any VLAN, and one thing you got to watch out for because with voice VLANs. Because with Cisco phones, if you have them on the same network as your, your data, we have the Cisco phone here, and that is a horrible phone, and you've got this PC, let's just pretend that's a PC, and they're on the same VLAN, this PC can actually listen in on voice traffic if it's on the same subnet. You can use these little programs, one called Kane and Abel, and Vomit to actually turn it into a WAV file. You can sniff those packets and play back the voice call. That's insane. So putting a voice putting voice traffic on its own VLAN protects you from those kind of attacks. Now the big reason is QoS right here. A lot of you have no idea or maybe have a little small idea what QoS. Here's the fastest 10,000 foot view explanation I can give. QoS is essentially a line at the amusement park. So you go to the amusement park and they have these fancy little fast pass bracelets, right? So you've got people waiting in the standard line. You know, you get the one hour wait and then you have people who pay money for the fast pass and they're classified as, and they're classified as special. And they get to go right on through to the front of the line to uh, right to the ride because they've been deemed as special. They're prioritized and that's QoS at its, in a nutshell. You decide what traffic is important and then you give it priority. So in this example, data traffic would be in our regular line and then voice traffic, we wanna make sure it gets, gets in there uh, without dropping packets or being congested. We give it a little fast pass bracelet and, and let it go to the front of the line, no problem. And then possibly the biggest push as to why we need voice VLANs is a lot of us are only working with one port. In a lot of offices, you'll encounter a cubicle, you know, when you get the faceplate here with with your, your, your ethernet port and you need to connect both these devices. Well, I mean, that, and, and that clearly won't work. And sure, we could put a switch right here, but that, that's kind of defeating the point, right? So what Cisco did is they said, hey, you know what? Connect your, your phone directly to the wall, and then we'll put this little, what's called a PC port on the back of the phone. You'll connect your PC right to the phone. Bam, problem solved. And that's, and that's what you get when you enter this configuration is you, you enter this stuff here and it allows you to do this, 
But the network engineer and you has to wonder, how does that actually work? This kind of bonkers. This isn't a, this right here isn't a trunk port, yet we're allowing traffic for a voice VLAN and a data VLAN. If you have more than one VLAN, we're talking about a trunk at this point, but it's not a trunk. It's an access port. Cisco is adamant about that. So how does that work? Well guys, that's about it. In this video, we covered voice VLANs, what they are, why we need them, and in the next video, we'll be covering the magic that makes a VLAN or a voice VLAN work. Hey guys, that's about it. Thank you so much for stopping by and learning something with me. If you haven't already, subscribe. Join us on our journey to become certified and to become amazing engineers. And if you need anything, if you need resources, study materials, or if you wanna get some cool stuff, hit up my website, networkchuck.com. And also congrats to all of you who passed their certification exams. Amazing job, guys. And my brother actually passed his CSINT exam recently. Cameron, congrats, man. So proud of you, bro. Well, that's all I'm gonna have for you today. Let's get certified together. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you guys later. So yeah, if you want to uh, be like Walter, if you want to make coffee like Walter White, this is what you do.